fellow RVers, I'm Rob Scribner from RV Travel Buddy, and I want to thank you for watching, and please take the time to subscribe. Today I want to talk about any RV is a good RV, and the reason I want to bring that up is I saw a really good video from a gentleman, uh, they call, he calls himself Line Screw from Canada, and he mentioned some commandments. And he just made up some stuff. It was kind of funny. But, you know, a lot of times we see in videos, or sometimes we just look at other RVs, and we tend to judge them. And what I kind of concerns me is before we judge, we should analyze that a little bit. So one of the things that we've taught our young people to do is to uh, be innovative. Another thing we've talked about is to try to stay out of debt. Even though the United States were famous for being people that get into debt a lot. <laughs> but, uh, for example, there's been a whole bunch of types of uh, RVers out there that they call them stealth, stealth type campers or they're working and living in vans or living in class C's, things like that. And, and we tend to say, oh, what a bum type of thing. And it's like, wait, 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 wait a minute. Here we got some young people reducing their overhead, keeping their costs down. They call it freedom. And it is a type of freedom. If you don't have debt and you're working and you have a job, what are you doing with your money? You're saving it. Are we not trying to teach our kids and our young adults this stuff? So, another thing we've noticed is you may see a lot more older RVs out there. And if you go on the, like Craigslist, you'll notice there is a lot of RVs out there that are used that are bargains compared to buying new. I think my fifth wheel was like $90,000 plus or minus, I know they're all over the place, they can be cheaper or lower, depends what you get. Motor homes, oh my gosh, they start at 100000 all the way to a million bucks. But yet, if somebody wanted to get into the RVing uh, lifestyle affordably and pay cash, and maybe they have the talent to upkeep or even refurbish uh, older RVs, then we should be very happy for that. One is they're using a vehicle that's not being used anymore. They're refurbishing them. They're doing it cost effective. And a lot of times they're doing it debt free. This is a good thing. The other thing we're noticing is a much younger generation. RVs are now being analyzed to support jobs, <clears throat> uh, to support whether you're just a nine to fiver and you go to some other place to work, or there's a lot of people working from their RVs. So the RVs got to support their computer systems or, or the type of work they do. Let's say they're in accounting or CPA. They need the desk space. They need the work environment. So, so many factors are now impacting the RV industry. And the other thing, if I ever had a chance to ask RV industry to quit just advertising how pretty the outside of a rig is, I think we need to put more emphasis on what's inside of a rig, uh, whether it's a trailer, whether it's a fifth wheel, whether it's a motorhome, class C, class B, whatever. So, <clears throat> what I like to try to get people to start thinking is any RV is a good RV. I don't care what shape and size it is. If somebody's got the gumption to get out there and use their RV, whether it's part-time, weekend camping, living, uh, touring, whatever they're doing with it, support them. And, and, take, and if, you wanna, if you're going to judge them, <clears throat> step back for a minute and ask yourself, why am I judging them? 
They're doing the things that we've asked them to do. Reduce debt. To live within their means. And I don't know about you, but with my children, which are grown up now, I wanted them to live a little before they settled down. I had a daughter and I had a son. Both of them in their 20s had a chance to do stuff. See the world. Go see what's out there. Follow their dreams a little before they got tied down to a family and nine to five jobs. I was there too. So, what's impacting our RVs and why should, you know, why should we judge these people? What's changing is what kind of work these people are doing. They may be contract workers, union workers for uh, highway systems, and they're using their RV as a tool to do contract work. The other thing that impacts what kind of rig people are using is what kind of driver they are. Not everybody can pull a trailer. Some people do not like pulling fifth wheels. So a lot of them will go to the class C's or the or the or B or A. Um, I've seen people terrified of RVs just because they had to pull something or the size of them. So don't judge anybody by the size of their RV. Judge them by the fact that they're able to RV and do it safely. The other thing that's going on is, well, a lot more working RVers. The other thing we're starting to see also, which is kind of surprising, is a lot of RV families. Uh, there's a lot of homeschooling going on. So not, why not homeschool and show your children the world a little bit? <sighs> the other kind of RVs we're seeing out there is weekend warriors with toys. Uh, that's why you're seeing the toy haulers. People love their motorcycles. They love their quads. Take them along. And they're still working 9 to 5 in their normal jobs. They use their RVs as a weekend warrior tool. Power to them. Other folks want to make sure they have rigs that they can drive into the city. That's why you're seeing a lot of these vans or Class B type of uh, tour um, RVs because they can work and live in the city and get away and maneuver and sometimes even what they call stealth camping. The big thing is people are trying to reduce debt and the RV industry has been an outlet to do that. We shouldn't shun people for trying to keep their costs down and not live off of credit cards and big mortgages. And the other thing is people will buy older RVs because they can fix things. And others will buy new RVs because they're not the best at fixing things, so they want warranties. All of it's good. But here's a good example. <coughs> We always make fun of these people who are like preppers. All their, they think a disaster might be coming. So they want you to prep for lots of water, and lots of food, and lots of ammunition and guns. And we're all going, wow, that's kind of heavy, don't you think? But, you know, if we had a disaster and the grid went down, or we had major earthquakes, or something terrible happened, who would be the heroes would it be us to shun those people? Or would it be the people that prepared or did things based on what they could do and can do? So if you own a $1 million RV driving down the road and a 25-year-old Class C back up, parks behind you and gets out of the car who happens to be a mechanic and didn't make the kind of income you did in the past and says... I can help you fix that. Who's going to be the hero? Who's better than the other? I'd say that in the RV industry, we're all equal. Just remember, any RV is a good RV. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Travel Buddy. Thanks for watching. Please take the time to subscribe and share our videos. Have a great time. And everybody, what are you waiting for? Bye now.